Hi, this is Mike from BandLab. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use BandLab's included sounds and processing capabilities to help you make smoother transitions. You can open this project yourself with the link in the video description. And if you find this guide useful, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be the first to know when new videos drop. Here I'm starting out with a sketch I made earlier. If you're looking for a guide to starting your own track from scratch, check out our playlist of video tutorials. The sketch consists of two sections. The first features a house drum loop, a breakbeat, a piano part, and a bass line. The second section swaps out the piano part for an organ part, but everything else remains the same. Let's hear how this transition sounds without any embellishment. This transition doesn't sound too bad, but it's a little clunky, and there's an opportunity to make things sound more interesting and polished here. The first and simplest way that I can improve this transition is to add an episodic marker to the first beat of the new section. An episodic marker is a sound that tells the listener that something is happening in a piece of music. A very common episodic marker for many types of music is a crash cymbal. Let's hear how the transition sounds with the crash cymbal added. This is simple but effective. However, the cymbal crash only occurs when we've already transitioned from the piano section to the organ section. I can help the listener anticipate the transition by adding some extra cymbals to the end of the previous section. Having that symbol at the start of the next section enhances the other techniques we're going to explore, so I'm going to leave it there. The second technique I'm going to try is using a separate episodic marker at the end of the piano section to clue the listener in that something is happening. I add a tech house vocal that plays for the bar before the transition, and I also truncate the house drum loop so that it doesn't play for that bar. This helps the listener focus on the vocal, and provides more of a contrast when the drum loop comes back in at the start of the next section. The third way to make a smooth transition is to use a riser effect at the end of the first section. This works well both with and without a drum loop underneath it. Drum fills are a great way to keep a track's momentum up, and I'm going to use one for our fourth transition technique. This drum fill keeps the track flowing naturally, and this method is subtler and less disruptive than some of the other techniques.
The fifth method I'm going to use is to edit the existing elements to create a fill. This changes up the rhythm of the track, but because I'm not introducing any new sounds, it doesn't create a dramatic textural change. So again, this sounds quite natural. My sixth transitional trick involves processing an existing element to create a little ear candy. I add an automated low pass filter on the piano track to sweep it out and back in again before the new section. Again, this tells the listener that something is about to happen and gets them ready for the new section. Remember, you can fork this project and make your own version of it using the link in the video description. Have fun!